Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today is a day I hadn't planned on doing a video, but I went outside to take out some trash and realized it's an absolutely gorgeous day. It's mid-December, -de and it's actually probably in the 40s, maybe the low 40s, upper 30s. Now, to some of you in some parts of the country, that would be a very cold day, but here, I think it's absolutely glorious. So I decided to do a little bit of work outside and look at some of my plants, and I decided it was time to start spreading the branches on my fruit trees. Now, I utilize the grow a little fruit tree method. It's also the Dave Wilson backyard orcharding method. I learned that in Southern California in the early 90s, and I've done it on many, many different fruit trees, and I'm utilizing those methods on some of my fruit trees in my new food forest right now. So I went and looked at those trees, and right now is not the time of year to be pruning. I wait until spring to prune, mainly because I don't want the, the wounds to stay open for as long as they will over the winter. If you do pruning in, a, in cold climates, I'm in Utah zone six slash seven, but if you live in cold climates, you're not going to have the, the wounds seal over as quickly if you prune them early in the winter. Now you can if you want, but it, you know, it's not gonna do a large amount of damage, but it is better to wait till spring if possible. So anyway, I looked at my fruit trees and I wanted to show you some things that I found and then talk a little bit about spreading branches. Now I'm gonna link a video up at the top that will show you how I planted these trees and why they are planted so close. I'll also link another video on how I did my pruning on them in the summer. So I pruned them very severely when I planted them. Let me show you where I pruned them. This is the height that I pruned them to, and they were just a stick when I planted them, and that was earlier this spring. And every single one of these branches came out since that pruning cut. So there were no branches left when I pruned it, but now we have a ton. And in June, you can see where I made the cuts in June. I made them all the same height, and then we've gotten all this growth since then. Now I'm going to be heavily, heavily pruning these in the spring again, but I wanted to come out here and look at them and kind of see if there's anything I could do earlier to, to help shape these trees. Now, what I am trying to do is form scaffolding branches. And let me take you up and show you my cherry tree and show you what a scaffolding branch is. Now we're here at the top of my hill and you can see my plum tree, which is to your right, and my cherry tree, which is the bigger tree. And you can kind of see how we have several branches that are chosen as main branches. Those are the scaffolding branches. And those branches are kind of like the skeleton of the tree. They're a little less pronounced here, but I definitely have scaffolding branches that I've chosen for my peach trees over here too. Scaffolding branches are branches that are chosen when the trees are young. You could see where they've branched out from, down low. And these branches were chosen very carefully when the tree was young. And most of the time, those stay throughout the life of the tree. They can be replaced from time to time, but as the tree gets older, it becomes more and more of a rare occurrence. This tree right here, this is my O'Henry peach, and this is one where I would like to develop a new scaffolding branch, one right here. If you look, sorry for my shadow, but if you look at all these big cuts, these cuts were made because I did not thin my tree well enough for a couple of years in a row, and they broke. So one reason to choose scaffolding branches, here's another peach tree with scaffolding branches, is you want branches that are gonna be strong enough to withstand a load of fruit. Peaches and nectarines, obviously you need to thin them to, because they, they fruit so heavily that even big scaffolding branches will break but you want the branches to be strong enough to withhold the, to withstand the load of the fruit and also snow loads in the winter and to provide good conduits for, for the sap to flow to help produce fruit. You also want the tree open enough, you want the scaffolding branches open enough to allow light into the tree. Because as I've said in past videos and Dan Owen, an arborist that works with me regularly has said, 
fruit trees are not really, you're not really farming fruit, you're farming the sunlight to form the fruit. So you need the trees open so as many leaves as possible can have sunlight reach them. So now that we've discussed scaffolding branches a little bit, if you look at these little trees down here, they're very, very crowded. So next spring, my, my mission is to choose three to five scaffolding branches that I think are going to work really well, that are spread equally across the tree, and that are facing the way that I want them to, and then everything else is going to be cut out and we're going to reduce the height again. So there's going to be a real severe pruning, which is going to break my 20% rule, 20 to 25% rule of, which means you really shouldn't prune more than 25% out of trees like plum trees and apple trees, because you're going to spark a lot of new growth. But while the trees are young, the, using the Dave Wilson or, orcharding method, you really want to spark new growth just in case the scaffolding branches that you have are not working out or that need better placement. So I can see a lot of branches that I'd like to use, but I had an issue with this side. So these are two trees, two pluots. This one, it, the branches are spread out really well. A snow load hit them and spread them out for me earlier this year. But this side, All the branches were pointing straight up and were really crowded together. So what I've done, and I'm going to show you how to do it on my little pear tree over here. So I found whatever I could find and I found some, you know, some metal stakes and some stretchy tape. And I have tightly pulled those branches down as far as I could get them so that they start to spread. Now I will spread them more. You know, next spring when I choose which scaffolding branches I want, I will spread them more with pruning, and we'll talk about that when it's time to prune them. But there are several different ways to spread branches, and let me show you how I did this on my pear tree. So this is my little Asian pear. We also did the cut right there this spring. You can see how short it was, and all the the rest of this growth happened later this year. Now right here, we have a branch that I think might make a good scaffolding branch, but it is pointing up, which uh, pear trees like to do. And I want to spread this out a little bit more, so let me show you how I'm going to do that. Now I'm basically using materials that I have you know, available. I have a rebar, the well-used rebar that I've used in many different areas. So I'm just going to pound this in as, at an angle. Make sure it's in there pretty strong. And then I'm going to take my green stretchy tape. So you can use basically anything you want to tie trees, to tie branches down. But there are several rules that you need to follow. Number one is I'm not going to tie the stretchy tape around the branch. I'm going to tie it extremely loosely so it's not constricting the branch because I've lost branches by constricting them because they do a lot of growth in the spring. And then I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to pull it down, not too much, you know, don't pull it too much because you can snap a branch off and I've done that in the past too. But make sure it's good and tight to the spread that you would like it and then wrap it around your wrap it around your stake and see if that's the spread that you want. Now this is about as far as it's going to go without snapping. So what I'm going to do is just make sure it's wrapped really well. Break my stretchy tape and then tie it. Now you you can do this in the spring if you would like. I like doing it in the winter because when it comes, because then when spring comes around and it's time to prune it, I can look at this tree with different eyes. I can see the branches that have been spread, see what they're going to look like. By next spring, this should have, this should solidify in this, in this position pretty well. If it doesn't, then I can, you know, tie it again until midsummer. I do, try not to tie them for any longer than six months. Um, a year tops. Six months is usually my goal. But anyway, I look at them in the spring, see what the tree looks like, 
and uh, it, it makes it easier for me to make pruning decisions. Now there are many other ways to spread branches. You don't have to tie them down. I like to tie the larger branches down because they are, you know, they need a lot of strength. But I received these. These are different spreaders. They're actually fruit tree spreaders in different lengths from a friend of mine. So these can also be used to spread branches or you can even use clothespins. You know, you can make your own that look like this. And let me show you how these work. Now this branch right here is not a branch that I'm actually going to keep next year, but let's say I wanted to spread this branch out. What I can do is take the spreader. Let me get you in closer so you can see what we did. And we can hook it between the two branches and spread that branch out. Now, now that I see it spread out, spread out a little bit further. This may be a branch I end up wanting to keep. I don't know. We'll look at it in the spring and see what we need to do. We can also spread it apart from the other branch. And let me show you how to do that. Now, if I want to spread this branch a little further this way, I can take it and spread it like that. So this branch right here is spread to a much better position. Like I said, it'll probably be removed this spring but I just wanted to show you what you could do. Now, after the storms come through, you will need to come through and check your, and check your trees and make sure that the spreaders have not dislodged. But this is a good way to move branches into the areas where you would like them. Now, if you have new fruit trees in the ground and have not spread them yet, have not looked at them, I challenge you to go out and look at them now and see if there's any branches that might work out as good scaffolding branches later and, and spread them. Now, just really quickly before the video ends, what you want for a scaffolding branch is more of a bowl or a chalice shape. You don't want them facing up like this. You want them out. You don't want them straight out, but you want them more of a bowl or a chalice shape and space and have them well spaced apart. The rest of it, you know, once you get the bottom part spread out, the rest of it will be accomplished with pruning, which will cover this spring. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If this video has been helpful for you, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.